Okay, I'm uh, Gary from Deep Visual. I'm just going to run you through a couple of the basic principles behind the CG8. Um, it actually takes stills here. They all are laid out on this pad, as you can see. So this one here responds to this key. This one here is this key. And uh, I can actually prove that by, uh, let's go to picture one, effect one. And there it is. There's a picture. Uh, there's picture 12. There's picture two, picture nine and so on. So let's, uh, let's select a picture here and we'll apply an effect to it. And I happen to know that this one is the kaleidoscope. So there you go. This one's really easy to understand. Basically you turn the knobs and things happen. This one uh, in increases the symmetry. So we can start off down here with three and uh, just keep progressively turning it up. And uh, well, there you go. Let's find something nice. Uh, yeah, that's nice. And uh, then we can mess with it a bit. Here's the rotation. And here's the zoom, there's all the way in, and there's all the way out. So let's turn it all the way up to full. And uh, let's save it somewhere. Go into Photo Patch, uh, hit Save, and uh, let's save it to here. Right, so uh, here's something I saved earlier, and here's something I saved just now, which is great. Uh, we can go straight back in to the picture mode and change the picture. And uh, there we go. Uh, there you go. Inst instant visual nonsense, as you can see. That's one of the basic effects. Let's uh, have a look at something else. There you go. All the effects parameters can be uh, adjusted manually. They can be adjusted using the trackpad as well, so that you can actually uh, play it instead of uh, sort of diddling with it. So you can also turn on the D-beam and uh, that'll let you do sort of weird and wonderful things. So that if you can combine the two, you can get all sorts of strangeness to uh, happen. It is a little bit like uh, a high-powered sports car in that when you first get behind the wheel, you can very easily drive it into a lamppost. After a little while, you soon get your head around what, what you can and can't do with this and what you should and shouldn't do with it. And uh, it all becomes incredibly interesting. Uh, myself, I use it all the time. I won't do a gig without it now. When I first saw it, I thought it was absolute rubbish. Uh, but of course, that was before I got my hands on it. So let's move on to the uh, modulation, because this is a synthesizer. It's not just an effects generator. It's built on the same principle as a synthesizer. So what we can do uh, here, as you can see, we can change the parameters here manually. If we press the depth button, we can go into the synthesizer modulation and now any of these dials that are off, off from the center will now oscillate. So uh, let's turn the Y up and we'll turn the oscillation on. Oh, a bit too slow, there it goes. So it's now oscillating on the Y axis. So uh, yeah, there you go, basic sine wave. We've got uh, more extreme oscillations, sawtooths, square tooths and uh, reverse sawtooth and uh, we've also got sound to light as you can see it's now happily oscillating every time it takes a sound input and waiting until it gets the next one so uh, uh, there are also uh, numerous particle well what they call particle uh, generator effects uh, it's got all sorts of things it's got this uh, this sine wave as you can see uh, it's an audio modulator and if I have a little tap on the microphone there you can get an idea of what's going to happen. Once you've got one of these it's going to take you uh, a couple of weeks just to find out what it can do, let alone before you get bored with it.